Hi Dash, can you imagine setting up the navigation of your .NET MAUI app in just a few minutes and doing it like a pro? Today, I'll show you how to use MAUI Shell to simplify your development, create pages, navigate between them, and even build tools like a color generator or QR code generator. This is only the first part of a super practical series based on an article I wrote for Teleric. So get ready, because today your way of building apps in the .NET MAUI will change forever. Let's go! Hi, how's it going devs? Welcome to this new video. My name is Hector Perez and this video is the first of a three-part series where we will explore .NET MAUI shell so you can learn how it works, how you can use it in your own projects, how to configure the shell, set up different pages, and more. These videos will be a bit brief, but they'll give you the basics so you can implement shell in your own projects. This video is based on an article I wrote for the Telerik blog, and here I basically explain what May UI shell is. In this introduction, I mentioned that it allows you to reduce the complexity of developing a .NET MAUI app by providing fundamental features that every application needs. What are some of these features? For example, it uses a single file where you can define the application structure by specifying pages. It also gives us by default different navigation schemes familiar to users, such as the use of flyouts, tabs, and tab bars. It also provides a system based on URLs that allows navigation to any page in the app, even passing parameters. And finally, we also have a built-in search handler by default. Let's see now how we can use Shell. For this, I have created a completely new and clean project. I have only added some packages that I will need throughout this video and in some upcoming videos. As you can see by default, any .NET MAUI project creates a file called appshell.xaml. However, to better experience the process of creating this type of page, we are going to create a new shell page from scratch. To do this, I will go to the project, right-click, and select the option to add a new item. Let's choose to show all templates. We will select the .NET MAUI category. We will create a content page based on XAML and we will name this page, for example, myshell.xaml. We add this new page to the project, and this creates a content page, just as you have likely done many times before. Now to turn this content page into a shell file for the application, where we can define the hierarchical structure of the app, we will change the content page tag to the shell tag. Here we have it available through IntelliSense in Visual Studio, and you can see that this causes an error that basically says the type vertical stack layout is not compatible with shell elements. We will see how to fix this a bit later, or for now, we can just remove this tag so it won't cause any trouble. The second step we need to do is go to the code behind of this page we just created. If we navigate to this page, you can see it still inherits from a content page, but we are interested in using the shell type. Therefore, we will set it to inherit from shell. With this, if we perform a build, you can see that we get a successful build. Here it is. Once we have that at this show page, we need to indicate that we want this new show page to be the application's main page. If we go to the app.xaml.cs file, you can see that when a new window is created, it specifies that a new instance of app shell is being created. But what we really want to use is my shell, which is the new shell we just created. So with this change, we'll be using the new shell. With this, we now have the mechanism ready to add pages hierarchically. To continue with the demonstration, we are going to create several small utilities to help us better understand various shell concepts. The first utility will be a color generator using three sliders. In this case, I will use Teleric Rad slider controls because they allow for greater customization. Let's go to the Solution Explorer, select the project, right click, and create a new folder to store the different pages. Let's call this folder, for example, Pages. Within this Pages folder, we will add a new item, a new content page in XAML format, and we will call this new page, for example, randomcolor.xaml. We add this page, and I will quickly fill it with content. I will start by adding the Telerik controls namespace, although if you prefer, you can change those controls to some native platform controls or similar ones. The next step will be to replace this vertical stack layout with the a resource dictionary contains information about the different colors for each slider. Next, I'll add the controls or layout for the application. You can see that I am using elements such as a grid, which will allow me to preview the color combination. 
I also have some red sliders that let the user select the color to form an RGB color by combining different values. There is a first slider for the red color, a second slider for the green value, and a final slider for the blue color. Finally, there is also a label that will basically show the resulting hexadecimal value. This is everything we need in the XAML code. Now let's move to the code behind for this page, meaning the random color class. And here I'll replace the content with a previously written class, which you can see on the screen. This class essentially detects when one of the sliders changes. I'll retrieve the value from each slider. I create a new color using the fromRGB method, since I have the three slider values available. Finally, I assign the grid color we saw earlier to the color we've obtained, which means this combination that is actually a color type. We also change the label text to the hexadecimal value. It's very simple code. As I mentioned before, many utilities that anyone can quickly create to experiment and test shell features. With this, our first utility is now ready. Now it's time to integrate it into the shell, because if we try to run the application right now, you can see that this is throwing an exception, an invalid operation exception, which basically tells us that there is no active shell element and asks if we have added any shell elements to our shell. This basically means that we already have our shell, our shell created, but we haven't added any pages to be displayed to the users. And that's absolutely correct. I stop the application from running and go to myshell.xaml, which remember is where we define the hierarchy of our application. This is where we will add the content pages that will be part of our application. For this, we need to use a tag called shell content. I'm going to start by adding a namespace reference to the path of my, to my pages folder. So I add XMLNS, let's call it util pages, and set it equal to CLR namespace. The name of the project is Maui Shell Utils. And here we have the namespace that allows us to basically redirect to the pages folder or the pages namespace. Once this is ready, I will add a shell content tag with the content template property pointing to the page we're interested in, which in this case is util pages, and the page is called random color. This is the simplest way to add a page to the shell hierarchy. If we now try to start the application again, you can see that the application we created is now displayed correctly on the emulator with this page. You can see how when dragging each of the sliders, the color or preview changes, and likewise this label updates to show the color generated from the values of the three sliders. You should note that since there is only one shell content element in the hierarchy, there is no flyout or tab bar, for example, and this is completely normal, as there would be no need for navigation elements if you want to create a single page application using shell. With this first utility ready, let's add a second utility that allows us to create a QR code from some text. How do we do this? To achieve this, I stop the application and create a second page as part of the folder called Pages. I indicate that I want to add a new item. Select the .NET MAUI content page template with XAML code, and we'll name this utility URL to QR.XAML. I create this page, and this utility is even simpler. I will quickly replace the contents of the vertical stack layout with this code shown on screen. I go back to my previous page to copy the namespace that points to the Telerik controls. I save the changes, and now we have a fully ready and valid code. You can see that the visual hierarchical structure is quite simple. I'm just defining a rad entry so the user can enter a URL or text from which the QR code will be generated. I also had a button to generate the QR code, and this is the important part or the key control, the rad barcode which will display the QR code generated from the text entered by the user. You can see, for example, that we have a property to not show it initially, so this control is displayed only when the user generates a new URL or a new QR code from a URL. And I'm also specifying that the sizing mode will be set to stretch. Once we have the XAML page ready, let's go to the code behind and replace this class. The class is very simple. It just has the event handler to generate the QR code. You can see it's very easy to generate a QR code with this control. We're simply specifying the value of, which is, while the value we want to assign to this property called value to generate the QR code, we get this from the text box, and finally we display the control with the generated QR code. We do this through the line you see on screen. With that, 
this mini utility is ready. Now we'll add it by going once again to the file myshell.saml. What we need to do is add a new shell content tag just as we did previously. But this time we indicate that the content template will be the page called URL to QR. I'll start running the application to see how these changes we've applied look. And you can see we already have the application. At first, it might seem like nothing special has happened. However, if we look closely, next to the title, there are now these three bars, which let us open a flyout where the pages added with shell content tags are shown. It may seem like this information doesn't really exist, but you can see here a gray rectangle indicating we are positioned on the first shell page. If we scroll a bit further down and click on this blank space, you can see that a second item is selected. And this has made the second utility available, or we've navigated directly to that second utility. Here we have the text box where we can basically enter a URL, for example, HTTPS. Let's direct it, for example, to the Telerik.com website. Let's indicate that we want to generate the QR code. And you can see that an image representing a QR code has been generated very quickly and easily. If you scan it, it will take you to the URL we entered in this text box. We see that the application works correctly, but to adjust the appearance of the elements in the flyout, let's modify some properties of the shell. First, I will change the background color of the shell to give it this orange color you see on screen. Also, to display information about the pages in the flyout instead of an empty space, as we saw earlier, I will modify the shell content tags. I will perform the replacement. And you can see that this time we are using the property called title for each shell content, specifying the title I want to appear for each item in the flyout. In the same way, I am indicating the icon that I want to appear for each of those elements as well. For the second shell shell content, I am also specifying a value for title and a value for icon. Let's see how these changes look in the application. You can see that the background color property has been correctly applied directly to the shell bar, as you see on the screen. Likewise, if I expand the flyout, you can see the name of each item or page available for navigation. In the same way, an icon is displayed representing anything you want for each of these items. This is the first way to customize flyout items, and also how to easily customize this shell element. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed and found the video useful. In the next video, I will show you how to create a more complex hierarchy and how to further customize the shell. See you in the next video.